Yeah, my name is John Bumstead. I'm based in Chicago. Um, uh, my business is called Roadkill Incorporated. Uh, I've had it for five years. Um, this year I will have refurbished and repaired in uh, 2013 about 6,000 uh, Apple laptops. Um, it's a little bit different of a business than what you've heard, um, but I, I'll just, you know, just kind of want to give you the evolution of my story and tell you a little bit about what happened in the five years. Um, so, you know, my background is in IT, um, you know, started in help desk, uh, sysadmin, network admin, that kind of thing. Um, evolved up to, you know, management and eventually became an ID director at a couple of companies, financial companies, uh, insurance companies, stuff like that. Uh, but I was depressed and hating life and I knew I needed to do, you know, something else because I was just, I just hit a wall. So um, it, it had to figure something out. So, um, you know, and, and I actually struggled for about a year to just figure out, okay, what am I going to do? Um, and as it happens with those things, you think, you know, the big idea is going to be some huge thing out there that, that's going to, you know, change your life and hit you over the head. But it's usually something right, right under your nose. It's just right there. And um, one of my hobbies had always been selling, buying and selling computers. You know, I'd always bought and sold my current uh, machines personally. Just had never occurred to me that I could do that um, professionally. But um, in one instant, it did. And uh, I found myself buying on Craigslist, selling on eBay. I could buy an $800 MacBook, sell it for $900 on, on, on eBay, and uh, you know that was money. And in a situation where, that I wanted, where I wanted to exit the corporate scene, that, that looked like an idea. So, um, but I was worried that I was going to um, fail. So um, I developed a proof of concept. I basically figured out, like, okay, I need $3,000 a month to live. So if I can make $3,000 in a month, um, I will let myself quit. So once I framed it that way, once I gave myself that challenge and I gave myself that permission to, you know, to do that, um, I was relentless and I think I made like 4,000 that month, um, quit my job and then I was suddenly at home, careerless and terrified. Um, so, <laughs> but I, um, you know, it's, it's amazing what, it, what can happen when your back's to the wall. I mean, that's, in a way, that's the best scenario. It's hard to work when you have a full-time job and then are doing something else, too. Um, but when there's no option uh, to fail, you know, you can, you can do some um, incredible things sometimes. Um, so I, I had that business model for a while, and it was a really bad business model, honestly. Um, First of all, there was a lot of money uh, necessary. I had a lot, you know, like $80,000 in the business, which for me was a lot of money, you know, rotating because I was buying, you know, good computers, working computers pretty much. Um, and, you know, I, I describe businesses, uh, the two sides of the business. There's the, the product coming inside and then there's the product going outside. And in this business model, I was, I was messing myself up on both sides. I was taking the full brunt of, you know, uh, customer service and shipping and, and returns and warranties and all kinds of stuff like that on both sides. You know, I was picking stuff up on Craigslist, dealing with those customers and then going home, shipping on eBay, selling individually. I was buying individually, selling individually, you know, so a lot of work. It's just really not the best model. Um, and then one day, I, um, a kid contacted me because I was advertising on Craigslist and he said he had an iBook G4 for 50 bucks. And, you know, I was into MacBooks. I was like, why would I deal with that old junk, you know? But, you know, he said it was, there was a blinking cursor on the screen. I figured I could reinstall the OS. And um, so I was like, okay, I'll help the kid out. I bought the computer, took it home, installed the OS, and sold it for $300. So that was one of those moments where the, the, the light goes on in your head because, you know, for a $50 investment, I had just, you know, made two and a half times the profit that I would ever make on you know one of these MacBooks that I was selling. So from that moment on, I knew I had to just buy mountains of broken material, and um, and fix it, and then sell it. And you know I, there wouldn't be that much money into it, um, and I'd be making the same profit, if not you know quite a bit more profit. Uh, so I started doing that. I started buying uh, the broken stuff on on Craigslist, and then the next sort of uh, epiphany occurred. Um, you know, if you're into broken materials, well, there are electronics recyclers and they tend to have, you know, quite a bit of that. Uh, so a, an electronics recycler contacted me um, 
and uh, you know, basically it came down to eventually I was I had relationships with you know five electronics recyclers uh, that would call me up on any given day and say, hey John, I got another couple hundred more for you, and then I would say, okay, that sounds good, ship them to me, and I'll pay Pally the money. So. Um, that worked out really well, and, and to this day, I have you know solid relationships with electronics recyclers that I've been dealing with for years and years. And in terms of the two sides of the business that I mentioned, the the inside and the outside, that kind of fixed the, this side because instead of driving around all day picking up computers, whatever, like I said, it was just you know a phone call. Hey, I've got hundreds for you. Ship them to me, and you're done. So that was huge. Um, that was you know a really big deal. Um, I, I forgot to mention actually repair. Um, you know, I did have to sort of give myself a, a crash course in repair um, because I was getting these machines. You know, most of them it wasn't just an OS install; it was you know something more severe, and uh, that was very difficult. It was uh, I kind of went at it alone. Um, you know, I remember I spent eight grand on sixty iBooks. I, spent, I stayed up all night and I couldn't fix one of them. So it was one of those, <laughs> it was one of those, you know, what am I doing with my life kind of things, you know. But eventually you start to get the knack of it, you know. Eventually I found iFixit, which was amazing. You know, iFixit has the, uh, the answers uh, portion of the, the website where you can ask questions and takes all these people who basically live in their basement doing this kind of thing and, you know, puts them all together so they can, you know, talk to each other and, you know, collaborate on ideas and, you know fixes, things like that. So yeah, I basically just got through the repair. Um, it, you know, it was not easy, but you know, got to a point where I could you know, do a good job with those machines. Um, and eventually, the, the final sort of epiphany came. And it, it sounds so simple, but it, again, it's those things that you think are going to be these big sweeping things that are right under your nose. An eBay customer who had bought many computers from me just said, hey, I want 10 of these. And um, so I sent them 10 computers and realized, hey, that's so much more, that's so much easier than, um, you know, individually listing, shipping, warrantying, whatever. So um, I began selling wholesale. And um, once I realized that there was one uh, wholesale customer out there, I realized there had to be more. Um, and I've always used eBay as a tool for buying, selling, marketing, everything. And so I had an idea. What I would do is I would um, try to find uh, wholesale customers through eBay. So I posted a listing for 10 computers, 10 iBook G4s, and posted a video in my eBay ad. Most people don't know you can put a video in your eBay listing. And in, it was a 10-minute pitch for what I do. Hey, I'm John. I have this business. I sell the highest quality refurbished Apple iBooks there are uh, that exist, and I want to sell them to you. And I put that out there, and now I have, I don't have that many customers because I don't need many customers. You know, you ha the people, they buy hundreds. So, um, you know, I have five to seven main customers that I've been dealing with uh, for years. So, um, that's basically it. Um, I, and, and as far as the two sides of the business go, um, the bringing the stuff inside was solved with recyclers, and the getting the stuff outside was solved by selling wholesale. You know, you're dealing with someone you've been selling to for years. They know the drill. There's no nonsense going on. You don't have to take tech support phone calls at 10 at night. You know, none of that. So the bottleneck at that point was just me kind of in the middle. I made the two sides easy. So now it's just me sitting there. And I think of myself as like a four-cylinder engine you know, churning away and not very quickly and, um, you know, needing to be faster. So where my business is at right now is, um, you know, adding people basically, you know, I've, I've got a few, but you know, it needs to, the business could be five, 10 times bigger if I just, you know, improve that engine in the center because there's so many recyclers have infinite numbers of computers and there are so many people who want to buy in volume and do whatever they do with them. <coughs> It's just that, 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 that piece in the middle that, that needs to uh, improve with me. So that's my challenge at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a unique uh, business model. Well, maybe not so unique, but uh, you know, I, I don't really need publicity because uh, in the wholesale model, because if someone is interested in my business and they want to talk to me, chances are they want to buy one computer. And that sort of interrupts the wholesale model of uh, doing you know, lots of volume. 
So it's, it's, it's kind of strange, you know, just being in a sort of self-sufficient state where I don't necessarily need marketing, don't need to advertise, you know, that kind of thing. So, so that's pretty much the last uh, five years of my life in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So how many employees do you have now? Um, I have three. Okay. And are they contractors? No, they're, they're part-time. They're Great. just... Are, is, like, do you have them on payroll or are you paying them? As oh, they're on payroll. Time? They're on payroll, yeah. Any questions for John? Yeah. What was wrong with his MacBooks? <laughs> oh. The ones that you put eighty thousand dollars on, you couldn't fix overnight. Those. Your yeah, those um, particular ones, they all had um, a GPU issue, issue. The iBook G3 had a um, uh, the, the video processor um, has a tendency to come somewhat unseated from the board, and it causes the video to go out. So. Um, there are lots of ridiculous fixes you can implement. The to answer is open it up and put a candle on the GPU and that fixes it. Yeah. Really? And you think I'm joking. No. no. That, that <laughs> is the, yeah, you, you have to reflow the solder between. It's the same exact issue as on the Xbox Red Ring of Death. Yeah. Well, I, I've done, I've tried to fake them before sometimes yeah. too, and it just doesn't stick that. But candle works. The candle, candle works. works. It, I mean, it doesn't work all the time, but it, I have a question the same, pretty much I asked for Microsoft who was in here. Mm -hmm. Licensing, I put the same OS on machines that they came with. I think that, I think with the Mac side, that's technically what you need to do to be safe. And, and honestly, my customers, they have their own image anyway. So I'm just using the OS to, to test functionality and then they're getting it and they're just dumping. They're probably, I don't yeah. even want to speculate what they're putting on there. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it varies. I mean, I, I get uh, good stuff and I get stuff that needs to be uh, repaired as well. Um, increasingly, I'm getting a lot of, of good product with, with the, the, the batches I get. It used to be all broken because recyclers tend to separate the broken from the good stuff and then they sell um, the good stuff off and then they scrap the, uh, the broken stuff. And they love me because I show up and I pay them several times scrap value for the broken stuff. So they're, they're, it's like magic to them. Like, why is this guy, you know, buying this broken stuff? But anyway, to answer your question, um, it, it varies. I specialize in uh, uh, iBook G4s, really old computers, discontinued 2006. I, I play the volume game. And I've, I'm to the point where I can do pretty much anything on those that. Um, would need to be done in, you know, max, the, the, the worst repair, like 15, 20 minutes. It's just that I've done it thousands of times. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much getting rid of iBook G4s at this point and moving into the 13-inch uh, white MacBook um, area because that is the next iBook. Um, there are probably tens of millions of those that are starting to come through the recyclers now and that will be coming through for, for quite some time based on how many were sold. So. Sure. It was really interesting talking about how you uh, built your wholesale clients. Yeah. So your initial uh, entry was a wholesale video on eBay, and people reacted to that. Well, I had one customer who basically gave me the idea. He said, "Why can't I just buy ten? Why do I have to buy ten eBay auctions?" Um, so he gave me the idea, and I happened to run across something about, you know, hey, you can post a video on eBay. And yeah, so my, my, my um, I don't really post it anymore because I don't need to, but that auction was literally just, you know, quantity 10, I booked G4, and I would just describe exactly what they were, had the video in the, um, in the auction, and yeah, there, because there, there, are, there are people who want to buy quantity just trolling uh, eBay. And they would find it and say, wow, you're the guy. I, I want this. Yeah. So they'd find your listing, then mm -hmm. they click on the video, and the mm -hmm. video would give them uh, ways to contact you, and they'd contact you through eBay messages? Yeah, it was just a YouTube video. Um, and and the, chances are they'd contact me through eBay, and then we'd take the conversation offline. I didn't do the business. eBay doesn't want to hear that. But I didn't do the business on eBay. I took the business offline, and um, it went from there. But that, it's, it, it's, it was a really effective way to uh, to find people, I mean, and I encourage everyone. eBay is 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 the most amazing thing for technology because everyone is on it. 
in some capacity, everyone is on it. So if you search eBay correctly, you can find recyclers just based on what they're selling and the quality of what they're selling. And you can just email them and say, hey, I, you seem to be kind of like this with this product. I do this. Can we work something out? And, and I've, you know, like I said, I don't advertise. I don't have marketing. I just, whatever I need, it's, it, it comes through eBay. I've had so many relationships come out, come out of that. Um, anywhere from, I gave up G3s about a year ago. Um, G4s I sell for anywhere from uh, like 60 to $90. But the, what I tell people is that like th they think of the, the old technology and they think, oh, why would I want to do that? But I think, you know, forget that it's a computer. Think of it as a, a share of stock. Like if I came to you and said, I have this amazing stock you can buy for $20 a share, and you can turn around three days from now and sell it for $70 a share, and there are tens of thousands of these out there, that would be phenomenal. So that, that's basically what the iBook G4 is. And it's still, you know, it's good for kids. It's still a little computer that has Wi-Fi battery and can browse the web and do games in Flash. Sure. Is why doesn't the recycler bring a couple techs in house, mm -hmm. develop supply chain relationship on the, on the wholesale side, right. and just not leverage somebody like you? Um, rather, I mean, what is the, what's the unique selling proposition? Is it just that you're solving a problem for them that they don't know what to do with? An electronics recycler is the way I, I, I describe recyclers, it's like they're playing a game of Tetris inside a giant warehouse. And there's big chunks of stuff coming in. And their job is to just get rid of the stuff. So you know, if, if I can make that stuff, they, they, they generally don't have time. It, it's just a, a volume game. They're just trying to get rid of things. You know, I come in and I make, you know, I, I, when, you do, when dealing with recyclers, you want to specialize and you want to take all of any given thing that falls under that specialty. So, uh, you know, if they know that I'm their broken Apple laptop guy, you know, they're going to call me and they're going to know that I'm going to take that whole Tetris chunk out of the, 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 the game and then they can move on and, and not have to think about it. Is it territory based? So do you deal with only a specific area or will you, will you deal with recycles all over the place? All over the place. Um, they ship to me. Um, I, I'm starting to do a lot more freight. Um, local too. I started out locally and then I just realized why am I limiting myself to that. It's easier to, you know, have people ship to me than, you know, take a truck 30 miles, you know, that kind of thing. But to answer your question too, it's, I would say being really good at repair can be hard, can be very difficult. So, um, and I've specialized in iBook G4s and 13-inch MacBooks, and I've, I don't mean to brag, but I'm pretty darn good at them because I've done thousands of them, literally thousands. And I think the, the recyclers I've seen that tried to repair, not to say that they, some couldn't do it well, but you know, it's always, it seems to be often a struggle with you know, finding, finding the guy like me to put in, inside their business. Right. There's a lot of advantages of specialization. I mean, you'll find this with your business. It's, it, it, it's always more profitable to fix 100 of the same thing than to fix 100 different things. Right. And like the, 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 the panel tomorrow is Well, I'm a recycler. Huh? I'm a recycler. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. I want to build this model within our. Right, that, that was my understanding. That's why and, I was and, asking. But you have different levels of recyclers. You have yeah. those that don't want to deal with it. Yeah. There's the well, other issue, too. What do you, how do you sell to someone like that when you're R2 or Ban East? Or? We're East Stewards. We're R2. And you can't we're sell Nate. Uh, we're so we're a lot of different things. What, what well, differentiates a recycler that might want to do it and might not want to do it? The OEM won't let you sell because the OEM is buying them out of the retail residential markets and they don't want them to be resold. They want to destroy because they want people to buy new ones. So they're buying that product from you. When you're buying it from the corporate market, you can resell them, but now you got to wipe it. Now you got to get into the section in BAN and the section in R2 about personal data. Well, okay, and then if you're dealing with certain companies, you're dealing with HIPAA, Sabane's Oxley, 
high tech, bring lights completely, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you're made, you know all this stuff. And we deal with all this. We do. So you can't do that. I've. We do. We do tell. Sure. I mean, we were. And you're breaking. And you're breaking your the legal no, commitments no, to ban. But it's not. Okay. I, I'm not an expert on this topic, but I do have several recyclers that are e-stewards and uh, R2 selling to me, and they basically have made me sign agreements. Um, so mo the, the brunt of it is, hey, if there's any scrap, you know, you must return to that particular recycler. So, um, you know, like I said, I'm not an expert, but they, they seem satisfied with the paperwork they've given me. Yeah. That I mean, they're becoming more stringent. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, as, as they come up with their different versions, I think these stewards is uh, uh, coming out with their next version. Uh, we we adhere to what they require, uh, and that's made these stewards are to. It doesn't matter uh, as long as it has. You know, we we do downstream what we call our downstream audits or even our upstream audits. You know, to, to make sure that they're doing what we need them to do. And you're selling it with the hard drives in. We are selling with the hard drives in. Oh, and right. we refurbish. We also put. We also image. Image drive. We were also we were more at one point in time, and now we're R2 because. So we I want to sideline this discussion because I think this is going to come up at a lot of the other panels over the next few days. Sure. And we'll keep this discussion repair focused. But I think I mean do take take your conversation offline because it is very interesting, and the environmental standards that are coming out, making sure they continue to be repair friendly is really important. Yeah. So you don't cut John out yeah. <laughs> accidentally. Yeah. 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 Uh, any other questions? We go on real quick. Last question, and then we're going to move on to the next. Well, what would you say is your percentage of success uh, with all the machine that you receive, all the equipment that you receive in trying to repair? Um, I always, I would say the average breakdown is probably 70% success, 30% failure. But the thing is, in my business, you need the 30% to fail because you need those parts. I always say the best, the best source of, of parts is a broken laptop. And um, you know, I don't. My goal is to never buy parts because it, you're paying a premium with every part that you that you buy. And um, uh, yeah, I need those parts. And that that com it, it falls in. It also the whole issue of specialization comes into play too because I only repair two types, two specific types of laptops: the G4s and and the A1181 white MacBooks. And because I only work on those. I have every part that is involved with any of them. I never have to, you know, go somewhere and spend 80 bucks on a screen or, you know, that kind of thing. As far as volume, how many equipment do you think you receive about yearly? About yearly? Yeah. Uh, this year I'm selling about, uh, I, I've pretty much processed about 6,000 machines. Selling? 6, yeah. 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 I, I mean, it's, it's gotten to, the, the quantity has gotten ridiculous with the G4s because as the volume goes down, I'm sorry, as the, the, the value goes down, the, uh, the volume goes up. And I'm about ready to jump ship on that one because it's just the treadmill's going too fast and eventually you just, you know, it kills you.